Okay, the controllers that be that run this world, they try to control us out of fear. I'm not motivated with fear. I mean, I welcome death, but then I have a messed up spine. I have a broken lower back and a failed neck surgery. I've got four screws. Doctors want to put in six screws. And this just goes to show you that so-called learned people, like doctors, uh, are in a, operate under a paradigm. They want to pretend that they are great at what they do. A conversation I had with a neurosurgeon based on the fact that the United States ranks 38th in the world in healthcare. He wanted to argue that we don't rank 38th in spine surgery. Uh, a lot of our ranking is based on the cost of health care. Well, I'm on Medicaid, so it doesn't cost me anything, so that argument fell flat. But what I wanted to tell him was, and I think I impressed upon him, because I said, well, go find it for me. He said, well, I'll look, but I'm sure we don't rank that low in, in spine surgery. And I simply stated, look, you've been told that screws are the way to go, but in the top 10 countries in the world, like France, for example, they don't operate on your spine with screws. The gold standard for a herniated disc surgery is not four screws or six screws uh, and a cage, whether it be plastic or metal, to replace the herniated disc. No, it's a artificial disc replacement. That's what they do in Germany, France, and the other top 10 countries, which I would call first-class surgical procedures. What we do in this work country is based on making money. See, I'm two years post-op for the four screws, and now they got to put six screws and some other different fusion stuff because the surgery failed. Artificial disc, there is no reason for fusion. You've got a new disc. That's the gold standard. But we don't do it that way in America. That's why we rate so low. Now that's just my example for spinal surgery. But we are told what to think in this country, not how to think critically. If you try to educate people, like I've done on my YouTube channel, Hillbilly EDU, uh, now they're trying to block it. They call truth conspiracy theory. This is a term developed by the CIA right after the John F. Kennedy assassination. They labeled everyone that said Oswald didn't act alone, a conspiracy theorist, that way to diminish your truth that you were trying to get out to the populace. So I've went ahead because I'm not motivated out of fear. I'm motivated when you piss me off. And uh, so in that vein, I've went ahead and created these different video sharing channels, all called Hillbilly EDU. This one here at QueerTube.org. I've got another one at BitChute.com, all named Hillbilly EDU. Uh, I'm trying to get one up at DTube, Metacalf. Let's see. Uh, v Vo is that V E O H dot com. Uh, again, they're all titled Hill, Hillbilly EDU. Uh, Tumblr.com, uh, Vimeo, and some of them like Vimeo, they only will let you upload a very small video. So I, I'm not sure eventually I'll have channels there. QueerTube and this BitChute that let you upload about any size. This one's limited uh, to, I think, three uh, gigs on your movie it won't handle I think I've got a four gig and it wouldn't take it so I'd have to break it up into two parts so it's not as good as YouTube but if YouTube is censoring my information and pretending as though like for example uh, they show one of my movies here as if I've made it private again I've made statements before that I don't do any of that. I don't make movies private. I mean, if I'm trying to wake people up to the truth and the lies in our society, I'm certainly not going to uh, 
make my movie private so you can't see it. That would defeat the purpose. So when you see movie made private or movies that have been deleted, know that I haven't done it. Okay. For example, this movie here, once they started this, I'd seen where the person running YouTube had met in Congress, testified before congressional hearing about so-called conspiracy theorists. Uh, I've got a video that I'm going to put up in the 9-2018 or September 2018 folder uh, on YouTube that uh, hopefully won't get deleted or blocked uh, so that you can see how they plan on taking conspiracy theories like the flat earth or any of these truths and hide them or bury them so you can't see it and one way that they're burying this truth so that you can't see it is by merely deleting it if you look at this test the ball folder that I made with uh, just a bunch of flat earth movies that I thought were compelling uh, there's 73 it's got listed here in this folder but it's really not 73 look through here and I'll show you uh, if it doesn't lock up on me here which it, it apparently has very nice um, several of them they've got made private uh, that deleted stuff like that like I say I've not deleted anything there's no point in me to do so that's uh, not helpful but in reality, I backed all these things up because they were doing that. And some of them, a lot of them are movies that I did not make. I merely found them, thought they were compelling, and put them in there. Like all these seeing the curve, that's my work. I did those videos. I made them. But uh, different movies like The Upside Down Moon in Australia, all these things... These are videos other YouTubers made that I found to be very credible and compelling. So I put them in this folder. If you look here, I've got 81 in that folder. So now they say I've only got 73. See, that's how they lie. See, if I, if I didn't have it backed up, I wouldn't know that they deleted movies. Because they act like they've got them all listed here as a total of 73. And out of that 73, several of them have made private, been deleted. I mean, I can't walk up through here. It's been locked for some reason. But uh, trust me, it's in there. If you go to the folder, you'll see. It shows 73 movies, but there's probably 50 in there because the rest of them deleted. Now, what I'm going to do is on those different platforms that I mentioned where I've got the same Hillbilly EDU channel up uh, with all these videos that they've deleted or made private, I'm going to stick them on those channels. I'm not going to uh, put all the ones that they've left on YouTube. I'm just going to probably put this movie here at the end of all these playlists on all these folders so that anyone that comes across it uh, will see that, oh, all these deleted ones are probably really compelling movies that uh, YouTube doesn't want you to see. Uh, another plain example of this would be this movie here, this guy UAP, he put this up and I copied and mirrored it in my folder dealing with the planes. Uh, and I think I titled the folder, uh, let's see, I think it's right here. Yeah, movies deleted or made private by YouTube, but the folder was fools on the plane believe planes use a great amount of fuel. So in that folder I had 13 movies but they show 11 movies only in the YouTube folder and two of them have been blocked well one of them has been deleted so it don't count so like instead of having 13 it only shows 12 and one of them has been made deleted so I determined that it's uh, this one was removed completely and this one was made private or something. So I'm like, well, maybe the guy that actually made the movie made it private. So I went, plugged it into the search box, checked it out, and no. He, it still has it in his folder. But see, he's not got it listed in a playlist. He just has it listed under all his movies. 
So I've got folders made up to convey a certain thought. So to make me look stupid, if you'll go to that folder, what they've done is taking the ones that pertain to that, like I've got 11 movies, and the one that shows why they wouldn't use fuel has been removed. And the other one that shows if they were using fuel, the plane would explode because this one here that they removed was uh, where they had landed the plane. Ten stupid aircraft landings from Boeing. Actually, I've got it up here. I'll play a little snippet for you. If it's not locked up, which, here we go. See all this fire and flame? I mean, if they had all this fuel on, bar, on board this plane, then these sparks would surely ignite the fuel going through the engine and it would explode, but it doesn't. So by removing this from my playlist, when you see these different plane landings where all these sparks and flames are flying out off of this engine and stuff, you would correlate what I'm trying to tell you about there can't be all this freaking fuel on board these planes. It doesn't make sense. But you have to question what they're telling you. If you don't want to question what you're being told, you just want to ridicule people and say they're stupid. So you see what I mean? They list this folder as only having 12 videos in it and one was deleted. I didn't delete it. The guy that actually made the video, they're still up on their channel. But it makes the title of the folder seem less believable because I'm questioning the lies of the fuel. And if you don't see this plane landing with the sparks flying out of it as the motor hits the runway and just drags the whole way until the plane stops, you know the engine's got fuel going to it. He didn't land the damn thing without the engine running, so it had to have fuel in it. So how come it didn't ignite the fuel going into the engine? And when the engine is ground halfway down, I believe, after it skidded along the tarmac, why didn't it ignite all the fuel in the wings? If there's all this, you know, swimming, Olympic-sized swimming pool full of fuel capacity in these little tiny-ass wings that they claim. I swear, I, I think I saw one video where it's like 80, 2018 or 2016 Camaros in each wing or 40 in each wing. It's ridiculous the amount of weight they claim these planes are carrying. And that video that they took off would make any common-sense person or hillbilly, which are supposedly lowbrow people. I'm a hillbilly. I've not got much brain power, but I can common sense figure out that that's bullshit. So they take all these that make it hard hitting and open your eyes to the truth, and they want to delete it or act like I removed it, so then the folder makes no sense. But there's proof right there that they've done that, and I've shown you. I think I have it up here somewhere. Hold on a second and I'll get it. So here you can see the fools on the plane folder that I backed up on the hard drive here. It's got 13 videos. So those are the ones that I showed you in the other one. This one and uh, the one where it's uh, Bumblebee from UAP. They removed from the playlist. Therefore, therefore, they've made the playlist less believable. So I don't like being lied to, and I don't like somebody taking things that I spent my time on and screwing with it for no reason. Like I stated before, if you go to my channel, uh, not as me, just as a regular person, you would see that some of these movies have been uh, blocked, copyrighted. But if when I log into my channel and go there myself, uh, it just shows me that it's uh, fine. Nothing wrong with it. Now, you come in and search your email that I don't look at very often. Sometimes they'll send me an email on like Movie 7, Deflating the Jesuit Ball. They say there's copyrighted material from PBS. That's why they deleted it. And I have to uh, try to get it reinstated. Now, uh, 
for all my dozen subscribers out there, uh, I would like to let you know that I developed this channel to wake up one person, my cousin, who I figured would understand and come to believe the truth of the flat earth. Because it took me less than six months to wake them up to the lie that is 9-11. Now I will show you later in this video how one of the executives from YouTube testified before a congressional hearing uh, and answered a question from a representative of Florida and he had mentioned conspiracy theories, theorists, uh, truthers, uh, people that lied about the 1995 Oklahoma City bombings. And he mentions they're lying, they're liars, and what are you doing to stop these people? Everything that I mentioned is code words for the truth. Conspiracy theorists, all this stuff. It's code words. Now, you got to understand this. This is like they're trying to say I made these movies private. I'd mentioned that I had 81, they quote 73. Had I not backed up the movies of the hard drive, I would have never knew I had set 81 movies in there originally. That's how sneaky they are about removing your, your movies that you're trying to wake people up. Some of them aren't as compelling as these that have been made private or deleted. Uh, so all my new channels that I'd mentioned before on these other platforms, all named Hillbilly EDU for you members uh, that are awake, obviously, uh, go there to the first three that I've gotten so far that I'm able to upload the longer videos, the ones that I made, BitChute, uh, Veho, I guess, V-E-H-O, uh, and uh, what was the other one? Hmm. The other one is QueerTube. Uh, you go there, and I'm only going to post these videos that have been made private or deleted or been copyrighted by YouTube for some crazy stuff like I was showing earlier, the PBS thing. I'm going to put those movies up there only. I uh, was saying to myself, uh, Lord, I'm going to quit doing this because I'm just trying to wake some people up. Nobody's listening anyway. I can't convince my cousin to the truth of the flat earth because his whole argument has been, so what if it's uh, round or flat? I still got to go to work tomorrow. The point is, it proves there's a God. The only book I'm aware of that talks about God is and, and the flat earth is the Bible. So it gives credence to the Bible being true. And another thing that gives credence to it, it always bothered me when I listened to this quote from the Bible in Romans. God be true and every man be a liar. I thought, what in the world is every man lying about? All the governments in the world are faking outer space if the world is flat, if this is true, okay? Every man, woman, and child believes in the ball earth and fake outer space. We're taught that way. So that's what every man is lying about. It's like it says in 1 Timothy, they believe in science falsely so-called. That's why YouTube is trying to block flat earth. That's why they want to pretend like I only had 73 videos. So what I'm going to do is, obviously, I was upset that it's, I'm being censored, and I thought, I'm going to all this work. Why, God, I've got over 300 videos in here. How am I going to get them all up? Well, the answer is right here. I don't need to get these up. They're not really concerned with you seeing this truth. This is the truth they don't want you to see. So on these other channels, I'm just going to post these hard-hitting truth videos they don't want you to see because for whatever reason, they must be more compelling than these other ones, which is great for you. So you go to those other platforms over the next couple of months, and God willing, I will have that stuff up there. God has put me in a position where I'm unable to work, but I have a brain. So laying here in my bed, I can go through these videos discern them, stick them up on YouTube, and let them be the purveyors of what I put up on these other platforms so I'm not spending all day, every day doing this. I'm done putting up my treasures here on earth. I'm working for the heaven and trying to wake people up to the truth of God. 
So I will be going through all these playlists on my channel and I will be finding out which ones they've deleted and since I've had it all backed up I will take this video here and put that up on BitChute, uh, QueerTube, and Veho and maybe I'll break it down into smaller parts so that I can put it up on Vimeo and some of these other platforms that will only allow you to post small movies so it might be breaking into five parts but that'll be later on down the line these other platforms that allow you to load huge movies I'm going to do that first uh, and you'll be able to go there and see some truth I mean I'm uh, I've currently watched one person so all you truth truthers out there uh, don't get frustrated because they're censoring your content just go to these other platforms and put movies up there. I was watching this uh, fella right here, Mandela Effect. He put this up. He just put a short one minute video talking about how they censored this because of the movie content that was in there, claiming some copyright. I've not, I've watched uh, half of it and I've not seen a copyright on it yet. So I'm, I'm very interested and uh, think it's a very great video for someone on the fence. I mean, why would they be summoning demons to uh, uh, CERN and uh, all these other things, these esoteric things that they show that this guy well documents in this movie here? Uh, I can see that being a reason why YouTube's trying to keep this off their platform. They don't want you to know this truth. So you can go to a video hosting site like this where I've got a channel. This fella here's put up a channel and watch these good videos. And send your friends, educate people. I mean, when the congressman from Florida, you'll see in my movie, mentions the uh, Oklahoma City bombing and all this, like everyone's lying, and he mentions the Sandy Hook fake shooting stuff, he's mentioning things and saying they're lies, but in fact, the truthers are right. They are lies, and the truthers are telling you the truth. Uh, the word truther never came about until after 9-11. And I came to know that it was a lie because our own president, George Bush, gets up and gives a State of the Union address stating, let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories that attempt to shift the blame from the guilty. And I'm like, what? Then he declares national security on firefighters' audio so that we don't know what they're saying? Well, now we know what they said. There was bombs going off. That's what they don't want you to talk about. That tells you it's an inside job. Even if there were hijackers, which is bullshit anyway, flying these planes into the building, there were bombs that brought the buildings down. They couldn't have done that shit. They didn't have access to the building. George Bush's brother ran security. Come on. It's obvious. And then... The FBI is complicit because they said they found the lead hijacker's passport on the sidewalk. Okay, nobody survived the plane going through the building, but a paper passport ends up on the street. How gullible are Americans? We're not believing this bullshit, are we? So that's where truther phrase came from, from that psychological operation. And now, the biggest one that we found is the flat earth. They're all milking us. And go look at it. You, you can have a skeptical mind. Go look at all the videos. I'm sure I'll have several of them dealing with the fake NASA that they've been deleted on the testing the ball folder. Remember, I had 81 videos. Now it's down to 73. And with all the ones made private and deleted, they say, like I deleted them, there's less than 50 probably. So I'll, I'll have probably 21 videos or so just dealing with the fake of NASA on this bit shoot channel that I made, Hillbilly EDU here, uh, that'll show you the truth. Go there. But if you want to know the truth, you'll investigate it and learn for yourself. There is a God. You better get right with him. So again, truth or audience, just to uh, recap, uh, if you want a slimmed down version of the truth that I found, uh, I'm going to list again, not 20 videos, just the videos that have been deleted from these playlists that I've acquired over uh, the two years that I've been laid up searching the truth, trying to wake up my cousin.
uh, and by extension you, whoever watches this information. So I started uh, labeling the, the folders for the month that I found it, the information. But there's 87 in that one. So uh, there won't be that many videos on this other channels that I'm opening up on these different platforms to spread this information. As long as, uh, however long it takes, this movie here is going to be loaded in another four hours on the Hillbilly EDU channel on this platform here, VO. So uh, you'll be able to go there and check it out. And it'll be a slimmed down version of the truth that I found. So hopefully wake you up and uh, your friends and family. God bless you and uh, take care. As the Bible says, question everything and hold fast to that which is true. Just wanted to go over one more thing here with you folks. Uh, I was over at this uh, guy's channel, Charles Fockert, um, over here on BitChute. And I'd seen this video where he'd re replying to uh, Flat Earth for Dummies. Uh, Eli James is professor of truth, and they've got a pastor on there. And uh, I thought it was interesting. I'd re read the comments while listening to uh, this fellow here that made the video. And I'd seen this one, and it's a curveballer argument that my cousin gives. Uh, and I call him a curveball because anyone that's played baseball that's a relatively a good baseball hitter would would know you're, you're a good hitter if you can hit the fastball. But a very good hitter can hit the fastball and the curveball, which are two basic pitches most any pitcher can throw. A good pitcher can throw a good curveball. Uh, what the curveball does is it looks like a fastball to an average hitter. If you can discern his arm movement, you can pick up that it's a curve, and you anticipate it dropping right when it comes over the plate. So you adjust your bat swing so that you can hit it solid. And uh, most people can't see the curveball, and they swing right over the top of it. So I analogize a curveballer as the one that believes in the ball earth. No one can ever show or demonstrate that curved water. Einstein himself was asked, uh, what's it like to be the smartest man in the world? He said, I don't know. Go ask Nikola Tesla. Tesla said Einstein's uh, relativity was a wonderful mathematical garb that to paupers looked like uh, an emperor, but it blinded people and bedazzled them with science and was uh, uh, fooled them into its underlying errors. He said it's a wonderful mathematical garb, but they wander off through equation after equation until what they come up with makes no sense to reality. And if you know anything about Tesla, he was the true genius that created our modern world. This lady here replies, what if the flat earth is the great deception? Okay. It would not, the great deception is keeping people away from God. Uh, it's not going to bring people to God. And when I found out about the flat earth, I realized right then and there, the Bible's true. Every man's a liar. This is what they're lying about. And I can't fear man. I'm going to fear the one that can burn me forever. Because one day I'm going to die. If I was an atheist with a broken back and a bum neck and the possibilities of laying here in a bed the rest of my life, I think I would kill myself. But since I know there's a God, then I would just trade this temporal uh, pain and suffering that I'm in now for eternal damnation if I kill myself. So I'm trying to really die and exit this world by doing whatever God wants me to do, and I think he wants me to wake people up to the lies. So in response to this lady's comment, I would like to read to you, Lulu Rain. You should like my curb. You are like my curveball cuz that gives me circular arguments because he takes pleasure in the lie, and God gave them up to a reprobate mind. 
My cuz knows that if he admits the earth is flat, then he must also admit there is a God. Romans says, God be true and every man be a liar. What would all the governments in the world and all educated people lie about other than the ball earth? Do you not know the Bible says, wisdom of man is foolishness with God? Also, if you believe the Bible consider that Martin Luther said about Copernicus, the Jesuit that created the ball earth lie. If you still don't believe, watch my 55 minute video. I try to use the truth they put in the movies to get across deeper truths. My second video I will upload is deflating the Jesuit ball. It should help you if you aren't aware of the Jesuit order. The Bible states we are to question everything and hold fast to that which is true. Like Charles said in the video, beware of those calling themselves pastor and professor. I tell you, sister, they may be wolves in sheep's clothing. Don't just take something to be true because you perceive it coming from an intelligent source or an authoritative uh, source like the news or government. You must question these sources. Ask God. And please keep me in your thoughts and prayers. I thank you. The first thing that comes to mind for me is the, the savage attacks on the student survivors of Stoneman Douglas. One of the most virulent strains of these attacks was that the students didn't survive a school shooting, that they were crisis actors. Uh, that they were planted by some mysterious cabal to finally get Congress to do something about gun violence. And in the weeks after the shooting, Alex Jones's YouTube channel posted a video uh, that was seen by 2.3 million subscribers, alleging that these were merely, uh, <clears throat> that these were actors and not real students who had experienced the most horrific thing anyone could possibly imagine. The video violated YouTube's rules against bullying and it was removed. An article posted to Slate.com describes this as a strike against the channel. Ms. Downs, um, how many strikes does a channel get? Typically, a channel gets three strikes, and then we terminate the channel. So uh, the reason I ask is Alex Jones obviously is a well-known conspiracy theorist, theorist whose brand is bullying. He launched similar attacks against the families whose six- and seven-year-old kids were slaughtered at Sandy Hook. Uh, and he's not the only one. Truthers have spread these lies claiming that Sandy Hook never happened at all. In the Slate article references a study by Jonathan Albright, director of the Tau Center for Digital Journalism at Columbia, who found 9,000 videos on YouTube with titles that are, and I quote, a mixture of shocking, vile, and promotional themes that include rape game jokes, shock reality, social experiments, celebrity pedophilia, false flag rants, and terror-related conspiracy theories dating back to the Oklahoma City attacks in 1995. Ms. Downs, does Google think that this is a problem and what is the solution that you're coming up with to address it? Thank you for the question. So as you noted, uh, when Alex Jones posted the video you described saying that the survivors of the Parkland massacre were crisis actors, that violated our harassment policy. We have a specific policy that says if you say a well-documented violent attack Understand. didn't happen, and you use the name or image of, of survivors or victims of that attack, that is a, a malicious attack and it violates our policy. In terms of conspiracy theory content generally, our goal is to promote authoritative content to our users. So we have two principles that guide the way here. That's the first one, is we want to provide users with authoritative, trustworthy Ms. Downs, information. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I only have a minute and a half, and I, I, I don't really need to hear what you're trying to provide. I want to know how you're dealing with all these conspiracy theorists on your platform. So the, the first way is by demoting low quality content and promoting more authoritative content. And the second is by providing more transparency for users. So we're introducing boxes that provide factual information at the top of results that have shown themselves to turn up a lot of information that is counterfactual, such as searching for the earth is flat on YouTube, where you see a lot of- Your response is to put a box that. saying, nope, the earth is not flat. Correct. Okay. So I think it's safe to say, uh, very simply, that uh, Facebook is losing the trust uh, of an awful lot of uh, Americans uh, as a result of this uh, incident. And, and I think an example of this is something that I've been hearing a lot from folks that have been coming up to me and talking about uh, uh, 
really kind of uh, experience they've had uh, where they're having a conversation uh, with friends, uh, not on the phone, just talking, uh, and then they see ads popping up fairly quickly uh, uh, on their Facebook. So I've heard constituents fear that Facebook is mining audio from uh, their mobile devices uh, for the purpose of, of ad targeting, which I think speaks to this lack of trust that we're seeing here. But uh, and I understand there's some technical issues and logistical issues for that to happen, but for the record, I think it's clear, seeing I hear it all the time, including from my own staff, uh, yes or no, does Facebook use audio obtained from mobile devices to enrich personal information about its users? No. Good. The, uh, well, Senator, let, let, me be, let me be clear on this. I mean, so you're, you're talking about this um, conspiracy theory that gets passed around that we listen to what's going on on your microphone and use that for ads. Right. We don't scientific fact, like, like, like the air we breathe, like gravity. Oh, okay, don't get me started on gravity. Now, are you telling me that you are so unbelievably arrogant that you can't admit that there's a teeny tiny possibility that you could be wrong about this? <laughs> There might be a teeny, tiny possibility. So, you know, to me, it seems uh, Einstein birthed uh, sort of this new modern era of scientific pontification where the masses and even those considered as scientists, mathematicians, etc., just simply jumped on board with this, uh, you know, relativity theory. And frankly, they jumped on board with it because that's what everyone else was doing. And so many modern day physicists, not just us crazy flat earthers, but so many mainstream physicists, engineers, scientists have, have looked at, at Einstein's theory of relativity and special relativity, and it's been debunked a thousand times over because it's utterly ridiculous. Well, it's not so much that, you know, like I don't believe in it, you know, it's just, I don't know, lately I get the feeling that I'm not so much being pulled down as I am being pushed. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's Isaac Newton and he's pissed. Has there ever been an experiment done to prove that the Earth is revolving around the sun? Yes, there was uh, several experiments in the 1800s. Dominique Arrego, uh, Armand Fuseau, uh, Augustin Fresnel. But one of the most famous was the Michelson-Morley experiment in 1887. No. Let's assume the ether frame moves relative to the Earth from left to right. Michelson Morley used a half silvered mirror to split a beam of light so that it travels in two different directions along two paths of equal length. This is the light beam before it is split. Moving in a perpendicular direction to the ether frame, this beam would be blown off course and would have to travel a little further. Traveling back down this path again, perpendicular to the ether, would also move this beam off course if the ether existed. This beam moving parallel to the ether and in the same direction would increase its speed. This beam again parallel to the ether but moving in the opposite direction would be slowed down. Here the two light beams are recombined together and if they are in phase they will constructively interfere. But if the speed was different in the two paths, they would combine to give an interference pattern. No. Tell us about that. Well, they used light beams to measure whether the Earth was moving. And they found that there was no movement. It was, the Earth has to be moving 30 kilometers per second to complete its annual revolution. And they found out that it wasn't moving. By, in a very precise, Michelson could have calculated it to one hundredth of what he got in his experiment. That's how sensitive his instruments were. What did the experiment involve in terms of apparatus, so we can get a concrete understanding of, of well, what they Well, if, the if the Earth is moving around the Sun, and we shoot that light beam in the direction that the Earth is moving, okay, and then we shoot another light beam perpendicular to that, well, the one that's in the direction of the Earth's movement should be impeded in some way if it's moving through space, whereas this one is going perpendicular would not be impeded. Why not? Because it's not going through space. It's okay. just going north and south. Okay. Okay? And what they found, they expected to have a 30 kilometer difference between these two light beams. There was no difference. So the natural interpretation, and even Einstein admits this, 
Mach admits this, Born admits this. The natural interpretation is that the Earth isn't moving. So how do we get out of that? Well, you invent special relativity. And now you say, well, the reason that light beam wasn't affected when it went toward the motion of the Earth is because the apparatus shortened. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Michelson's apparatus shortened as it was going with the Earth in its orbit around the wait, sun. No, wait, you're, you're telling me that the contraction of mass yes. was invented to explain away the results of the Michelson-Morley yes. experiment? Yes, and that's what my book will tell you, and it's been admitted by all the scientists. Well, isn't there any experimental confirmation that as you approach the speed of light, there's a contraction effect? I, I, the impression is that there's all kinds of experimental confirmation. That was this. invented. It was, there's no proof to it. All really? These, yes, all the physicists will tell you there's no proof Not, not that it. I'm surprised you understand. Yeah. I, I know what the scientific community is capable of in terms of mass deception. Mm. Evolution is a mass deception. But I wasn't aware that they don't really have any even uh, uh, purported scientific confirmation in terms of physical measurement no, nobody of the contraction measured, effect. Nobody measured a contraction. But they put it into a mathematical formula called the Lorentz transform, and it's probably the most famous equation used in physics today. Does, it, does anyone expressly admit that, hey, we had to come up with this contraction effect because otherwise we're stuck with a motion? Yes, Earth. the very guy who invented it. Tell me what Heinrich you, tell Lorentz. Me what he Lorentz says, I don't have any other explanation to this experiment of Michael Samorley unless I contract the apparatus. Otherwise, we're going to have to believe the Earth is standing still in space. Unbelievable. Yeah. All physics can right. do is describe relative motion. And Einstein even says, it's, it's a quote in our book, it is equally valid under relativity to talk about the Earth motionless at the center and the universe rotating around it, or the Earth rotating on its axis and the universe being steady. Okay, Phoebe, this is it. In this briefcase, I carry actual scientific facts. A briefcase of facts, if you will. Okay, I'm just saying that it's one of the possibilities. It's the only possibility, Phoebe. Okay. Ross, could you just open your mind like this much? Okay. Now, wasn't there a time when the brightest minds in the world believed that the Earth was flat? You gotta listen. Try to listen closely. I mean, you know, keep in mind the details are pretty technical. You know, I, I will I will try to dumb it down if I can. So the ADIRU system, also known as the Air Data Initial Reference Unit, we pronounce it IDARU. IDARU. Oof, it's a horrible name, but I'll, I'll keep trying. IDARU is the standard in modern avionics. It's at the center of a modern aircraft's avionics system. This has been the case for some 20 odd years and has replaced the old uh, internal, I'm sorry, inertia navigation system, otherwise known as the INS, which was a standalone reference for the navigation computer. IDARU offers one, ring laser gyros. No more mechanical spinning discs on gimbals. The RLG uh, are on a tethered or strapped down platform. Uh, ring laser gyros. Two, the integration with other systems. IDARU provides a reference for other systems like the ADIs, weather radar, yaw damper, thrust control, etc. It used to be the case that all of these systems were independently referenced with dedicated gyros. And three, much greater processing power. Whenever IDARU is started up, it needs to be initialized or aligned. This is where the system calibrates itself to the spin of the Earth to prevent drift. The procedure involves entering your latitude and longitude coordinates and commanding the initialization. During initialization, no systems that reference it can be on and the aircraft must be stationary and stable. Even loading luggage or catering supplies can disrupt it and cause an error. This takes from between five to 17 minutes, depending on how far from the equator you are. And by the way, as I was reading this the first time, I thought for a while there he was going to be, you know, a pilot, finally a professional that comes out against flat earth. But that's not where he's going with this. So bear with me, all right? Uh, now the story, if you're still awake. In October of 2015, I was commanding a routine six-hour flight. When it came to initializing the IDARU, it returned an error. This is not all that uncommon, and it usually takes on a second attempt. After a few tries, we just got the same thing, error. I called the tower, 
explain the situation, and they sent an avionics text out. I'm sorry, tech out. He ran his check in the avionics bay and said that it all checked out and that the fault was only with the initialization module inside the box. In this situation, they would normally just unplug it and slide a replacement box in there. However, it's a rare occurrence and has never happened to me. Unfortunately, there was no replacement available at this location. I called the company and reported the situation. After about 20 minutes, someone got back to me and advised that they could get a replacement box to me, but would take about 12 hours. Or since my flight plan was not outside of ground radar coverage, I could use GPS as a primary reference and adjust the ADARUS data via ATC manually and periodically to compensate for drift. I decided that the later suggestion was within safe limits and made the decision to continue. As instructed, I had my first officer regularly call ATC for ground radar positioning and make necessary adjustments to the IDARU data. However, throughout the entire flight, mind this was a six hour flight, no drift occurred. This was a real head scratcher, and since it's company policy and my personal policy to understand as much as possible about the aircraft and its systems, I wanted to know why. I talked to someone at our fleet maintenance department and was told that they didn't make repairs to any black boxes, and I should talk to the manufacturer, in this case, Honeywell. I contacted Honeywell and managed to talk to a senior IDARU engineer. He was very helpful. It turns out they don't make the ACM, or the alignment calibration module, which looks a bit like a desktop PC hard drive painted bright orange with warnings printed on it, do not open, serviceable only by manufacturer. It turns out that there's only one company that supplies these modules to all avionics makers, and nobody else seems to know anything about their workings. I tried contacting the company and was just given the runaround. This is very strange since pilots are usually welcome anywhere in the industry. I could show up unannounced at Boeing and get treated like family. After a lot of digging, I found out that this mysterious ACM manufacturer is a contractor to NASA, and that's all I can find out. To date, I've been unable to talk to anyone there and still can't find out anything about this ACM. It feels like I've hit a wall but I'm still digging. To be fair, I wouldn't describe myself as a flat earther. I'm just someone who wants this question answered. If there are any breakthroughs on this, I'll let you know. Feel free to use the, any of this on your show, but please remember, refer to me as Mac. I did consider allowing you to interview me, but this time I don't think I'm comfortable with that. I'll let you know if I change my mind. All the best, Mac. Wow. Okay, so let me break that down for you real, real quick. So inside the gyro system that he was talking about, the gyro system, in this case, the black box was made by Honeywell. The alignment calibration module is not made by Honeywell. It's subcontracted out by another uh, company, and that company has it sealed to where only they are allowed to work on it, but they don't ever work on it. They just swap them out. They just swap out the parts. So what happened was this particular alignment module broke before he could fly, the weird, you know, the, on the weird circumstance, they couldn't get a new one in there, so he flew the six hours without using it. And the plane should have drifted because of the curvature and the Coriolis effect, otherwise known as the, the spinning of the Earth. And it didn't. The plane didn't drift for six hours on a 777. That's a flagship, top, you know, top of the line stuff there. Why didn't it drift? And he was trying to figure out why. He couldn't figure it out. And, and in the process of trying to figure out uh, what happened, he discovered that this module, there's only, this module is made by exactly one company and they supply every airline in the industry. And when you try to call them, they don't talk to any, they don't talk to you. And they're a subcontractor for NASA. Remember what I said about if you want to plug the holes, you want to do it very securely, you know, when it, when it comes to hiding things, and this would be that thing. So <laughs> to keep the pilots from not worrying about it, you tell them there's a guidance system inside their plane that accounts for the curvature and the spinning of the Earth, and it doesn't. And you hope to God something like this doesn't happen, to where it breaks, 
and the pilot goes, well, wait a minute. How am I flying normally without that, th without that thing working? How, wh why have that thing in there at all? And when you call the company to figure out what they're actually doing, they won't talk to you. That's brilliant. Here it is. Gyroscopes. Prove unequivocally, beyond any doubt whatsoever, two things, actually. One, that there is no curvature of the Earth. And two, that there is no motion to the Earth. So an INS is a navigation aid that uses a computer, first and foremost, and that is also huge. Motion sensors, accelerometers, and rotation sensors, gyroscopes, to continuously calculate via dead reckoning the position, orientation, and velocity of a moving object without the need for external references. Okay, so let me break this down and tell you what this is actually saying. So oh, and listen, before I do that, let's jump over here to the other thing that it talked about, inertial platform, which is basically a gyroscopic platform or a stabilized platform using gyroscopes to maintain a platform in a fixed orientation in space, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but let's go back to this. So what they're talking about here is Schuler tuning is a system that describes modification to an inertial navigation system, which, first of all, an inertial navigation system, as we have already described, requires the use of a computer. Well, that, first of all, should raise a lot of red flags to anybody that was a pilot before 25 years ago, which would be me and many, many other people on the Earth. And the reason being is because we were not using computers in our aircraft at that time or any time since the Wright brothers to compensate for the curvature of the Earth. It's utterly nonsense. So what it's doing, what they're saying is that this modification brought about by Schuler tuning, which is using a computer to affect a navigation system. Now, first of all, let me tell you what the navigation system is that they're describing. These navigation systems are not in use in most aircraft today. They are in use in a large amount of the airliners, but as far as to the total percentage of all aircraft on Earth, not even a drop in the bucket. So what this is saying is, is that the inertial navigation system, which would be a complete autopiloting system, which would allow you to take off, fly your route, do your landing, all that stuff, all by computer control automatically. It is the Schuler tuning that is a procedure that describes how to modify an already existing internal navigation system to compensate for the curvature of the Earth, whether it be from GPS data, which, by the way, is not existent for that particular function, or some other methodology, which there is another methodology, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But the bottom line is, is it's talking about modifying an existing navigation system that would be of the high order of technology anyway that never even existed before 25, 30 years ago. So even if it were true, which it isn't, but even if it were true that it were modifying the orientation of the gyros to keep consistent so that the gyroscope is at a constant 90 degree angle perpendicular to the center point of the Earth, which would be directly below it. There is no way to necessarily do this. And I can tell you that all navigation equipment that most airplanes use, which is a gyroscope for your artificial horizon, for your turn and slip indicator, for your rate of climb, all of those are based on straight up gyroscopes with absolutely no modification to them to change any orientation to the gyro itself to compensate for gravity or for the curvature of the Earth. Because the whole idea is to keep the gyroscope plane at a perfect 90 degree angle to the, so what gyroscopes really do is their claim to fame is they have a rigidity in space. Now, you can buy a gyroscope. People have used gyroscopes for years. They're toys. They also make extremely high-end gyroscopes that are precision machined that will run for a long, long time, 20, 30 minutes you know, on a spin. They also have them now uh, where you can use little electric motors externally to spin them up to around 8,000 RPM. Well, this is something that was never done, that never able to be done you know, back in the days of antiquity when, for example, Foucault, did his gyroscopic experiments 
And Foucault is kind of credited for all of this, by the way. Not only was his pendulum bullshit, but he also lied about his results on gyroscopes. I guess where I'm going with this is there's a Navy video, and I've got it here, and I will actually also post this. Okay, so here's the Navy aviation training film. And what they say in this makes perfect logical sense for any gyro. And they say that because gyros maintain a rigidity in space, that you can change the orientation of the gimbals all around them that are attached to it, but the gyro will stay right there. So Foucault allegedly did an experiment where he and his cheesy 200-year-old gyro, supposedly, he was able to spin it up and actually see precession in the gyro, which would have indicated and proved motion, angular motion most specifically, brought about by the rotation of the Earth. Well, that's all fine and dandy, except that everybody that has performed this experiment since he's done it, and with far better equipment, has failed to get any results that even remotely come close to what Foucault claimed that he had. A good example, Rob Durham bought an extremely high-precision gyroscope, did the precession test, guess what? He let it run for, well, several, uh, quite a while, uh, and he had calculated the precession based on his latitude, and of course the gyroscope did not move at all. There is another guy, uh, Yeoman P, that uh, here's his video, where he let it run for six hours, and it detected absolutely zero motion. Well, a lot of people came back and their debunks was, well, the gyroscope simply was not uh, sensitive enough to measure this movement of the Earth, which is, of course, ludicrous, because if Foucault could do it uh, several hundred years ago, with his cheesy gyroscopes, the notion that we couldn't replicate it today with high-end 21st century engineered gyroscopes, and also we have the advantage of motors, which will keep that gyro spinning continuously, and we still cannot duplicate it, that tells me that Foucault lied. It also tells me that if in our airplane, going back to my Cessna that I rented years ago when I was first getting my private pilot's license, you know, that had a gyroscope in it that had to be calibrated on the ground. In other words, you cage the instrument while you were on the ground, and caging is simply nothing more than setting the azimuth into the gyroscope while it's calibrated on a level surface on the ground. And when you cage it, that's the last place that you calibrate your gyros. Once you take off, the gyros continuously run, and the only thing that you correct is uh, heading due to magnetic declination, and this is something that's a routine practice for pilots. But the bottom line is, is that if there were any curvature at all, not only would the gyroscope detect it in an airplane, it would detect that ridiculous amount of curvature that I was talking about earlier, that you'd have to be compensating at the rate of 2,800 foot per minute in a standard jet airliner, but guess what? The gyroscope simply does not detect that. Why doesn't it detect it? Because there's no curvature to the Earth. End of story. There are so many things that prove this, and anybody that thinks that there is any modification going on to the gyroscopic mechanism itself that is modifying for the curvature of the Earth is diluted, and they simply have not done their homework and looked into these strange phenomenon that everybody's touting called Schuler tuning or the air discharge veins at the bottom of the gyroscopic gimbal structure. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Didn't exist 30 years ago when I got my pilot's license. You are never ever trained to compensate for Coriolis, curvature of the earth. You are never trained on the instruments. In fact, it is the very nature of the instruments to fight any sort of curvature or turning away from anything that is perfectly flat level. There are a million people that are going to come back with a million rebuttals to this, and I say bring them on, because whatever you bring back, I would suggest you really research it deeply, and then fine. If you find something that's great, present it to me. I will be happy to personally debate this with you, because for the last three weeks, I've done nothing but research this, and I'm telling you, the gyros, gyroscopes, contrary to the people in the chat that are claiming that they prove the ball earth, do anything but that. They prove the flat earth. Not only do they prove the flat earth, but they prove the motionless flat earth. So any comments, guys? 
It's a possibility. That's why when we come out with these results that we're going to be hitting the universities directly and the, then the scientific community with these results. And, you know, somebody somewhere is going to look at it and listen and go, oh, my God, you know, we're not we're not appealing to the trolls. We already know what your function is. And we already know that uh, either you are complete idiots or your cognitive dissonance is at, at such a high level that you'll never come out of the matrix or you're simply being paid to try and debunk this. But you know what? Things like what I presented today are not debunkable. Um, and not only that, it's been proven for over 100 years. Um, and modern day technology is even proving more that there is no lateral motion around the sun, period. Yes, there is a rotational vector that's going around the earth, but it is absolutely conclusively proven that it is coming from the heavens, the dielectric energy of the stars themselves and not the earth's rotation underneath them. So, you know, I, I'm sorry to go on this rant, but, you know, these trolls really piss me off sometimes um, because, you know, all they can do is armchair quarterback, tell us what we do wrong, and never, ever do they prove, uh, provide any conclusive evidence to the contrary. All they can do is post links about what NASA says or what the mainstream says, and they act like they're big smarty pantses because they found this and they can, you know, show it to us. You know, like it means something. You know what, guys? Give it up. <laughs> we're actually looking for our own truth, and we're doing it the best way we know how with the resources that we have. And, um, you know, I'm sorry, but we're ripping you a new one. Um, you're just you're losing this battle and it's about time you rid yourself of cognitive dissonance and start, you know, smelling the coffee here. How, how, how are you going to go into work tomorrow? How, how are you going to face the other science guys? How, how are you going to face yourself? idea a single idea from the human mind can build cities an idea can transform the world and rewrite all the rules which is why I have to steal it Hiding something, and we need to find out what that is. We gotta break out of here. Give him the kick! This was not a part of the plan! Wake me up! Wake me up! I know we have still not shattered that highest and hardest glass ceiling, but someday someone will, and hopefully sooner than we might think. As the galaxies go whizzing by over the glass domed ceiling, now tell me that does work for you. If it's true, does it change how I live my life? This is something that is not an easy answer because of the magnitude of what we're talking about here. How it will change your life, first of all, when you understand it, is dramatic, to say the least. Will it change you from having to go to your job every day and the things that you typically do every day? No. But when this knowledge becomes more mainstream and these agencies are starting to be held accountable, and you understand that they're all participating in this, not just the United States government, not just NASA, but China, Russia, India, all of them have space programs. They all have the same symbolism. They're all doing the exact same thing to their citizenry. And the first thing you have to understand about this is that the deception goes all the way to the top. And when I say all the way to the top, you have to kind of get rid of the notion that the people at the very highest levels are working together.
why would they do this? Why are they trying to hide the fact that we are on an infinite plane uh, or on a flat earth rather than a ball? Well, if you isolate people into the idea that they're on a blue marble that's in the middle of a universe that is really insignificant and there's thousands or millions and billions of other worlds and possibly other civilizations, that makes most people think that we are insignificant and that we did actually come about as some sort of an accident. Now, when people believe that, their minds are much more malleable into being given the idea that there is no God, and there is no creator, and because of that, that also gives the controllers this fertile soil to build other deceptions on. Why do you think that uh, Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of this world until now? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. It's about total control, mental, physical, spiritual, every way, shape, form possible. You have to remember how big of a conspiracy this is. This isn't talking about just the JFK thing or isn't talking about just 9-11. It's on an umbrella kind of system to where it is the biggest deception that there is. It actually exposes every other deception and nothing else brings down the power of the elite because it really exposes education, science, the economy, television, museums, universities. Think of all the things that have been fooled. I feel worse for the people that are out there building satellites, the people that are out there actually working for these space agencies, the people out there teaching in schools as professors, because they would all come to the conclusion eventually, once this gets out, that they've all been contributing to the lie. Why do you believe what you believe? Prove it without using NASA or any other space agency, the government or military of any country in the world. Why would I say that? NASA has been proven to be liars time and time again. I could spend a whole weekend here showing you the lies of NASA. How many of you believe your government is 100% honest and can be trustworthy? <laughs> and how many of you know the military answers to their government? Okay, so if those three sources are all proven liars, why would you trust them? Fool me once, right? Shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I say, continue to believe pathological liars and you're an idiot. But that's what we've all done. And so, you know, I look at these stuff, you know, we've all seen the textbooks, we've all seen the videos and movies and all these things, and there's so much of it. Do you know what the budget NASA has? You know how much they, they get? How much money they get? Have you seen the movie Gravity? Okay. That's made for about $100 million, give or take. And if you saw the movie Gravity, that was pretty impressive. I saw it on IMAX, big screen, like, wow. I mean, I felt like I was with Sandra Bullock flying around in space, freaking out myself. Okay, this is what they're able to do with $100 million. What are you able to do with tens of billions of dollars a year? since the 60s. Now in my opinion, we're being lied to not only about the shape of the earth, we're being lied to about the very nature of reality itself. Uh, in 1954, Admiral Richard Byrd, a highly decorated naval officer, conducted an interview where he alluded to the idea that there may very well be land beyond the poles. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, well, do you hope to see that? We don't know. That's the big problem. We don't know where we are, okay? That's what we're all trying to figure out here. But there is the Antarctic Treaty where, you know, 
53 or so nations have signed saying that no one's going to lay claim to Antarctica and that there are massive restrictions for travel there. You can't just get up and go to Antarctica on your own. You know, you have to have a, a tour guide with you and there are only certain entry points and there are limits on where you can go search. Personally, I think the unconquered south face is the only one worth scaling. It's a 20,000 foot sheer wall of ice, but that's never stopped me before. I just want to stand on top of the wall and piss off the edge of the world. <laughs> what difference does it make? What difference does it make? Yeah, that's their favorite line. Got a lot of people, what difference does it make? You can't figure out what difference it makes? If you can't figure out what difference it makes that the people running your world have fucking lied to you over and over your whole life if you can't figure out that someone lying to you is trying to control you. Suppressing of information, of knowledge, is control. Deception of information and knowledge is a form of control. So what difference does it make? It makes a big difference because once they start omitting information or lying about information about where you live, they're doing it to control you, period. Why am I having to explain this to critical thinkers in the truth movement? The way you control billions of people is to keep them divided and fighting each other. Flat Earth is not a PSYOP. Flat Earth destroys the PSYOP. Every PSYOP that's been used to control us. For as long as they've known about it. So this system has been in power and control for hundreds of years, ever since they convinced the rest of the world that they didn't know where they live. It created this fantastical scenario to make people feel insignificant and to follow those that appear to know better. Why is the flat earth so important? Because it shows the deception. And if everybody would just come together and demand answers, they would be in checkmate. They would not know what the fuck to do. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I believe that's why we have so many who are indoctrinated to still believe and fight so hard for the heliocentric model. The reason being is because we've been taught the globe model since before we had the ability to think for ourselves. Think about that. Before you could think for yourself, before you could form rational thought, you've been taught that you live on a spinning ball, although your five senses tell you something totally different. Our senses tell us that the earth is flat and stationary, that the sun and moon and the stars rotate above us just as we see, that they make their annual cycles in such a way that we can calculate days, months, and years of the passage of time, just like in scripture. The earth in itself works like a well-designed timepiece, and we all know that any timepiece that we can think of has a designer. What if the lie is to hide the existence of that designer. What if they're lying to us about this because they're hiding God? 